Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to this guide to the basics of MIDI recording in Cubase 13. This is the first video in a new series I'm making where I'm going to describe simple concepts as clearly as I possibly can. I'm going to cover a whole range of topics, everything to do with the composition and recording of music. If that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell to be alerted when new videos come out. And without further ado, let's get underway with today's topic, how to record MIDI in Cubase. We're going to start off by creating an instrument track and already things get confusing because in Cubase, there are two different ways to store MIDI information. You can store it on an instrument track or a MIDI track. And in many ways, it's actually a bit of a false distinction. An instrument track contains everything that a MIDI track does plus an instance of a VST instrument. That's the only difference between them. So we're going to start off with an instrument track because we need an instrument to hear our sound. Which instrument we're going to load is determined by our selection. Here you can see that I've selected the Halley and Sonic instrument. We get to choose how we talk to that instrument. Well, I'm going to press keys on my native instruments complete keyboard and the information is going to be sent to the output and this is a default option. We don't need to worry about that today. Let's give it a simple name. I'll call it Halion and then click add track. Now, as you'll see later, there's a very good reason why I've chosen Halion Sonic today, but it does add a very small wrinkle uh, into our process. I need to load an instrument into one of these 16 slots. So I'm going to click on slot number one and I'm going to scroll down to the Sonic selection library. You should have access to this as well. And I'm going to load an acoustic grand piano, double click. And the grand piano has just been loaded into slot number one. If I press a note on my keyboard, there's the piano. We're going to close Hallion down for the moment. We'll be having a look at it a little bit later, but that's enough for now. Let's have a look at what's happened on this track. Down the left hand side, we have this thing called the inspector. And this tells you all sorts of information about your currently selected track. Here's the instance of Hallion Sonic that's been loaded in our instrument slot. We're going to be having a look at MIDI channels at some point today, but for now, I just want to get some information recorded. I'm going to press record, which on the keyboard is the asterisk key. We'll get a one bar count in and then I can start recording some notes. So there's me playing a chord, that's a C major chord. And there's me playing some notes. Press the space bar, which is basically stop. And all of those notes have been stored inside a MIDI part. This black rectangle is a MIDI part. Down in this lower zone, we have the key editor. See one of these tabs gives you access to your note information. And I can scroll in and out by pressing the control key down on my keyboard and then scrolling up and down with my mouse wheel. So there are all my notes. I can now press the number one on my keypad to go to the beginning of the locators and the space bar to play that information back. So it's now recording, so it's now playing back all of those recorded notes. Now I didn't record those notes to a click track, which means I didn't have a metronome playing in the background. The notes have no bearing, no resemblance to this four bar loop that we're in. We're just looking at pure note information at the moment. But there's already a lot to understand here. We have MIDI notes. I can click on one of them to select that note. And then we have a status bar across the top of the event editor that's going to tell us a lot of information about those notes. And in the project view above, we have our MIDI part that contains those notes. And this is a really important thing to understand about MIDI notes. MIDI notes will not play back in Cubase without being inside a MIDI part. They can exist, but they're very unhappy to exist outside of a part. I'll demonstrate that very quickly. I'm going to pick up one of these notes. I'll pick up E2 and I'll drag it to the left. I'm going to let go. And Cubase warns me that I'm about to do something that it really doesn't want me to do. And it gives me an option. Do I want to make the MIDI part bigger and keep the note inside the part? Or do I want to do this thing anyway? So if I say move anyway, that MIDI note has just been orphaned. The beginning of it is no longer inside a MIDI part. It's where my mouse currently is. And so Cubase won't play it back. It's grayed out and you won't hear it. If I go back to the beginning of this four bar loop and press start, now you're only hearing the C and the G. It's really easy to kind of bring this note back to life. I could obviously move it back inside the part, but I could also, this was the other option I was given earlier. Do you want to extend the part 
so that the note will still be inside it. Let's try that. And now suddenly the note turns purple again. It's once again, Cubase is happy and will once again play that note back. So it's gonna be in your interests to get comfortable with that terminology as soon as possible. MIDI parts contain MIDI events. A note is a kind of event. There are all sorts of different MIDI events, pitch bend and after touch and modulation wheel events, all sorts of stuff. We're talking about MIDI notes here and you'll only hear them if they exist inside a part. You can't ever have two MIDI parts occupying the same space in Cubase. It simply won't let you do that. You can split MIDI parts up. If I get the scissors out and cut this part up into two. Now the notes in the editor below are only representing the currently selected MIDI part. I'll press the right mouse button to go back to my object selection tool and pick the other MIDI part. And now you can see those notes. It's also possible to select both of these MIDI parts by using the selection rectangle. And now we'll see them all. You can see that Cubase also favors one MIDI part over another. There's a bit of a rabbit hole to jump down there, so we're not gonna worry about that today. I'm simply gonna glue those two parts back together using my glue tool. And now we have a single MIDI part again. Now, did you notice that when I glued those parts back together again, we were left with an artifact from my cutting procedure. When I cut up that MIDI part at bar 11, this note got split in two. That's an editor option, and I think it is worth me explaining this very briefly. We jump into the preferences window. In editing MIDI, we have this option called split MIDI events. If you cut a MIDI part up, this is what happens. And with this option being activated, we've had this behavior. So this note will now play twice. I can right click, get my glue tool and join those notes back together. So we're nearly back where we started. I'll just pick this note up and move it back in place. Let's pick on one of these notes and have a bit of a closer look at what's actually happened. I'm gonna select the C2 note. And now in our status window, we can see here's the pitch C2. The velocity is the volume of the note that was played. And these bars at the bottom of the editor in the velocity controller lane tell you how loud the note is. If I draw with the pencil, I can increase or decrease the volume of that note. As I do so, if I deselect it, you'll see that the note changes color as it gets louder. Another way to edit notes is directly in this status window. I can click on this 93 and drag down and that makes it quieter. I can select multiple notes and now I can edit all three of those together simply by dragging up and down with my pencil. I can pick up the beginning of the notes by hovering over them with my mouse and then dragging backwards and forwards. And I can edit the length similarly by dragging backwards and forwards. Okay, so those notes have been recorded onto a MIDI track. You get a MIDI track for free when you create an instrument track. That's really what an instrument track is, plugin plus MIDI track. Now let's go the other route and create a MIDI track on its own. So I'm gonna click the plus symbol again, but this time I'm gonna choose the MIDI button. You get a slightly different set of options. We still get to choose what's our communication device. Well, I have my physical keyboard here, so that's gonna stay the same. But this time we have slightly different terminology. We're not loading an instrument onto this track anymore. There isn't going to be an instance of Hallian in this new track. What it's asking us for is where do we want to route this information to? We want this MIDI track to talk to this instrument, to the Hallian instrument. We're gonna communicate on channel one. That's another default, and we're gonna leave it as is for now. I'm just gonna click add track. And now we have a new symbol representing the MIDI jack, and we have our new track. It got the default name because I didn't explicitly give it one. This MIDI track is capable of containing MIDI information in just the same way that instrument tracks are. In fact, I can pick up this instrument, this MIDI part and drag it down onto the MIDI track. And as things stand right now, there'll be no difference whatsoever. You'll hear these notes played back exactly as was. But there's a very important difference between these two tracks. The MIDI track is routing this information somewhere else in Cubase. It's actually sending this MIDI information into the instance of Hallian, which is loaded on the instrument track. Now you might ask yourself why I have this distinction. It seems a bit spurious. The reason is that you can have many different MIDI tracks all containing note information, all routing into the same instance. You've only loaded one instrument into memory. We have a single instance of Hallian here 
the MIDI tracks contain the data, the instrument track contains the instrument, and we pass the information from one place into another. Now we're going to create a couple of extra MIDI tracks in a moment, and I'll demonstrate some of the flexibility and power that MIDI tracks contain. But just before we do, we want to have a look at MIDI channels, because I think this is the area that's potentially most confusing about MIDI. You see in the left hand inspector, we see channel one. And if I select that drop down option, you've got any at the top and then 16 MIDI channels. This is a fundamental aspect of the MIDI protocol. There are 16 channels and imagine them as 16 separate tunnels connecting this MIDI track into the Halion plugin. If we go back and have another look at the Halion plugin, here are those 16 channels. What I'm going to do now is load new instrument into channel two. So I've selected channel two. I'm going to go back down to my sonic selection. And this time I'm going to load up a draw bars organ. Halion Sonic defaults to each of these slots communicating on that specified MIDI channel. So the draw bars organ is communicating on MIDI channel two. I'm going to close it down and we'll demonstrate that. If I select my MIDI track and change this track to channel two, now we've got exactly the same MIDI note information, but it's going to get rooted to a different place. I'm going to make these notes a bit shorter so that we don't have to wait quite so long to hear the sound. Here we go. Same information rooted to a different location. So what does this channel two actually mean? The information contained in this track has already been recorded. In fact, when we recorded it, because my keyboard is currently outputting channel one MIDI information, every note in this MIDI part is actually recorded on channel one. Can you see? All of these notes are channel one notes. Their default behavior is to output on that channel as well. And they would like to communicate on channel one if given the opportunity. But here's a really important thing about MIDI. If the MIDI track overrides the notes behavior, the MIDI track wins. So by specifying channel two at the track level, the notes no longer get to do what they would kind of like to do. They're instructed instead to do this new thing. If I switch this MIDI track back to channel one, we'll play the piano again. But as I said earlier, you can have multiple MIDI tracks routed to the same place simultaneously. Let's create a new MIDI track. And this time we'll choose the MIDI channel from inside our add track dialog. First track's currently communicating on channel one. I want this new track to communicate on channel two. So it's going to output MIDI channel two data. And as we toggle back and forwards between those two tracks, you can see channel one and channel two changing. Now I'm going to record some new information on this MIDI track. Can you see as I select each one of these tracks, this little red symbol changes, follows along with me. That's the currently record enabled track. And by default, the selected track is record enabled in Cubase. That's the behavior we want today. So we'll leave it as is. I'm just going to move my locators in by one bar so that we're recording from the beginning of bar 10. So what I'm going to do now is play a lower note, a C1, and we're going to record an organ tone on MIDI track number two. Here we go. Press asterisk to engage record. And now I'm just holding that note down while the rest of the sequence plays over the top. So as soon as I finish recording, Cubase updates to show me the currently selected MIDI part. And now I can toggle backwards and forwards between these two MIDI parts. The single C1 note is going to play back on the organ because MIDI track number two is rooted to channel two. And all of the other notes will play on the piano because they're outputting on channel one. You can hear those two instruments playing simultaneously. This is the advantage of recording on MIDI tracks. All of this information is rooting into Master Halion, which is sat above it all. While we have the Halion instrument selected, I'll just clear up one extra little bit of confusion. The Halion instrument itself also has a default output channel. You see channel one selected in the inspector for Halion. That's representing what's going to happen to any MIDI information on the track itself. There is currently no MIDI information on the track itself. So we just don't care about this value. We could set it to anything we wanted 
and all of the notes would still play back perfectly happily. The only reason why this would become significant is if we move MIDI information onto the Hallian MIDI track itself. Let's pick the piano back up and move it up onto the instrument track. Now this information is going to be output to MIDI channel 7 and Hallian doesn't currently have anything connected to MIDI channel number 7, see it's empty. So you're not going to hear those piano notes anymore. They've gone. Do you remember when we were looking at the individual notes though? They're all still actually recorded as channel 1 information. If we give these notes the proper opportunity, they will express their kind of true state. In order to do that, we can set the Hallian track to channel any. And now the track itself, the MIDI track itself, is agnostic. It's not basically influencing the MIDI data at all. It's going to allow the MIDI data to express its real intention. And its real intention is to output on channel one. So we'll hear the piano again. Now it's possible and actually really easy to confuse yourself with MIDI. And the best approach to take to it is to keep things as simple as you possibly can. If you're recording information and you only have a single track to play, maybe a single melody line, you don't need multiple different MIDI tracks. You don't have the kind of complexity that Hallian has where you can communicate on different MIDI channels simultaneously. Create an instrument track, leave it as is, and record your information on the instrument track and everything will work perfectly happily. The only reason you need to ever create MIDI tracks is where you're doing something like this, where you're recording different information. Some of the information is going on to one MIDI channel, some is going on another. Maybe you're creating a harmony part and you're creating three separate melodies and you're going to use three different MIDI tracks and merge them all together to play into a single instrument. That's another really good use case for using MIDI tracks. Let's have a quick example of that kind of thing. I'm going to delete all of the information that we've got so far. I'm also going to get rid of this organ track, MIDI track 2. Let's get rid of that. Keep things nice and simple. This time I'm going to engage the click track. I'll press C on my keyboard and little um, activate metronome option highlighted below. So now I'm going to record a really simple piano melody on MIDI track one. Here we go. Now I'm going to create a new MIDI track. And I'm also going to assign this to channel one. I'm going to press record again and play another melody higher up the keyboard. So now those two melodies played pretty poorly, it must be said. I'm actually going to press Q. I'll just press Q and quantize all of that note information so that it'll play back a little bit more pleasantly. Now if I go back to the beginning of the part and turn my metronome off, press C. A really simple example of using multiple MIDI tracks to create harmony lines and now each of the tracks can be edited independently. We can edit each one of these harmonies. It's not going to have any impact on the other one, but they're all joining back together and funneling into the original Hallian track. The final thing I'm going to do today is edit the MIDI channel of all of track two's information. I select all of these notes and double click where it says channel. I'm going to type the number two, enter. Now all of these notes want to output the organ sound, they want to output on channel two, if they're allowed to. But if we select this MIDI track, currently the track is overriding this default behavior. So as things stand, you're still going to hear two pianos. But if I edit track two's channel output to any, now the notes are the masters of their own destiny. The track's not getting in the way, it doesn't care. And now you'll hear this second melody played on the organ. And that's our basic introduction to recording MIDI information in Cubase. Hope you found the video useful today. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.